Hey everybody, welcome to my video on sequential games with imperfect information. This is a follow-up to the one with perfect information. I changed a couple of the payoffs here to give us clearer answers, but more importantly, I'm going to change this game by making it so that when blue player plays the second time, so when we're choosing A or B, the blue player is unable to observe what the red player has done. Uh, there's not perfect information here. And the way we're going to draw that is we're going to put this loop in here. And what this loop says is that the blue player has no idea which of these nodes he's at when he makes the decision. And so if the player has no idea where they're at, they have to act as if there's no information. It basically makes it so it's not even a sequential game anymore. It makes it much more like a simultaneous game. Because red player also knows that blue will be playing like it's simultaneous, will be playing like there's no information. And so red player will also play as if it's a simultaneous game. So when solving this, when we see a sub game like this, we're going to convert that to a simultaneous game. And so both of these subtrees are going to have to get converted in order to solve this. Uh, so let me show you a little bit what I mean by that. If blue plays left, then we will find ourselves in a sub game that looks like this. Where if red plays L and blue plays A, blue gets 20. If red plays L and blue plays B, blue gets zero, and so on. All of these values in here come from these payoffs. So let's solve the game. Let's solve this sequent this simultaneous game. If red plays L, blue would prefer A over B. If red if red plays R, blue would prefer B over A. Uh, let's do the other side of it. If blue plays A, L prefers red over left, right over left. And if blue plays B, then red prefers right over left. And so here we've got a Nash equilibrium for that sub game. A Nash equilibrium that has blue playing B and red playing R. All right, we can do the same thing to the right hand sub game. And we get something like this. So if, uh, I'm sorry. So if red plays left, blue will play B. If red plays right, blue will play B. If blue plays A, which we know it won't, red will play left. And if blue plays B, red will play left. All right, and so here we've got another Nash equilibrium for the right-hand subgame. So when I see this, I have some idea that the equilibrium outcome involves a right B outcome down here and a left B outcome over here. So I can simplify my game using these payoffs. If I go left, we're going to wind up at this 3-3 three, three outcome. If I go right, we're going to end up with this 410 outcome. And that's really easy to choose for blue. 4 is greater than 3. So blue will go right. Now, what does that mean for our equilibrium? Subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. Blue, choose R. And then we have to dis dis say what to do at each node. If we're at LLL or LR, 
meaning if we're in that left gain, choose B. Now, why did I combine these? Because, why did I combine these? It's be, Now, why did I combine these? It really would, if we had perfect information, it would matter if red had chosen L or R. But since we can't observe it, all we really know is this L. And if we're in that L, choose B. Uh, likewise, if we're in the right, so RL or RR, choose A. So let's move from here and let's get our equal let's find our subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. And here it is. Blue, if at the top of the tree, choose R. If left left or left right, choose B. Now why did I do that? Because in the perfect information game, if left left, the answer would be choose A, because it had that beautiful 20 payoff. Well the thing is is we can't observe the information, which means we're in a simultaneous game, which means we don't really know if we're at L or R. And as long as we're on this left side, the Nash equilibrium is choose B. And so that's what we're going to have to roll with. And then if RL or RR, still choose B. The red choice is easier to talk about. If they go left, go right. If they go right, go left. And so the outcome that we expect to see happening is going to be a right, left, B. And so the outcome that we expect to see happening when we combine all this analysis is that's going to happen and then that's going to happen and that's going to happen. And that's where we'll wind up. Um, I can highlight the other strategies on here. For instance, all of these B's get highlighted and so does that one. Uh, so that's like an illustration of the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, but the outcome that I expect to occur is that one. So I hope this was helpful to you, and I recognize that I didn't use much fancy notation. Uh, that's because it changes per teacher, but hopefully I gave you good enough intuition. You guys, thanks for watching, and happy econing, and good luck with your game theory.